Uh, what is up ninjas? My name is Sam World and in today's video I wanted to talk about something that I've been working on with my production over the past few months and that is going to be variation. Now if you find that you get comments from people saying that your track gets boring eventually so let's say the track sounds good but then just feel like uh, it kind of gets boring or if it falls stale or if it doesn't go anywhere then a lot of these issues have to deal with variation. Now I have a, a thing I like to tell my students that while it sounds easy it's actually hard to do and that is every eight bars something new needs to happen. Uh, you bring in a new sound, you do things and in these tips we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to bring a little bit more variation into your tracks and get your track sounding a little bit more interesting and actually more impactful as it moves from the intro all the way to the climax and obviously to the outro. As always guys if you want to support my channel make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find a lot of my sound design work some great sounds for serum silence spire check them out and let's get straight into this tutorial steal like an artist that is a great book but we can also use it here if you've watched my youtube channel you know that i'm a huge believer in having reference tracks having a couple that you can compare your track to and there's a lot of benefits that you can get from just hearing someone else's track in a more analytical sense or having it inside of ableton obviously we can use it in a mixing perspective but the other way we can also use it is sort of as a variation uh, tool we can use a track to see okay what does the artist do here that differentiates this part of the track this second verse over the first verse or what do they do here to differentiate the break from the first breakdown etc having a reference track is a big thing and sadly you know I tell a lot of my students to use them and I always ask, end up asking them this question whenever I get a question like I don't know what to do here or I don't know what to do here and I'm like well let's check out the reference track you used and a lot of the times they go like oh I couldn't find one or oh I didn't uh, you know I don't have one and I'm like well we've talked about this if if you have that question a reference track can easily answer certain things or inspire you let's say the artist just brings in rides you could decide to go wait you know what I'm gonna bring in a hoover or 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 an uplifter or or maybe white noise rides instead of rides you know you can do it in your own certain way but the key thing with the reference track is to use it as cues whenever new stuff happens whenever new stuff comes in you want to use that sort of as a cue for yourself as well when it comes to variation in your music a lot of us like to look more at the chords melody and bass but one of the things that kind of gets put on the side is going to be the drums now drums can change the energy completely in a track. Think of a track where someone brings in rides on the climax and it all, all, all of a sudden the energy is just amped up like someone took a damn Red Bull and it's just like, I have wings. Drums can be used effectively to move the track forward and create variation. For instance, you might hold out on adding a shaker instead of having it start with the song. You might hold out on adding the rides until you get to a specific part where you want essentially the energy to be at a climax, at max output, and etc. There's a lot of ways you can do this, guys, and today I want to show you guys a couple of ways that I did it on the song I'm currently working on. When it comes to drums, guys, I think the biggest issue is always going to have to deal with that. A lot of us like to use drum loops, and I, I don't feel like there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, is that when you use a drum loop, if you're just using one, you're really limiting yourself to how you progress your drums. Essentially, the drum loop is dictating when stuff comes in, and if that's a full-out drum loop, it can cause a lot of issues in the way that you move stuff forward. So in order to implement that, you do want to utilize stuff where you're messing around with certain things in the drum loop. For instance, you can utilize the... Um, the mixer automations on it and then eventually bring this back up so that you know you get the full out drum loop so you can use that to your advantage just to kind of bring stuff in slowly for instance in this track here when we started You can see that that transition just feels even more epic as you get a new sense of drum coming in. Everything is still the same, but there's just more drums added. Some of the bass came back in, of course, which is another tip that I have, which is the next tip. But again, it just does so much, especially two on the drop.
We're gonna move to this part of the song here where we get something new. So you can see this shaker comes in here and it just changes the atmosphere completely. It makes the track feel like it's moving a little bit faster, which in essence means more fucking Red Bull, more energy for your, for your listeners. So that way, uh, when it comes in, Filtering is much more than a sound design tool. And honestly, I think this one's more common sense, but I still hear people that don't do this. And that is they don't filter enough. When they're introducing, let's say, a melody and the buildup of a song and they come out balls deep with that lead, well, you just gave away your ace of spades. You gotta introduce the lead in a way where you're not giving it all away, but you're subconsciously letting the person listen to it so they know what to expect on the drop. And it's just not a sudden like, whoa, what, what, what just happened? So filtering, you know, it's very basic. You see it in the buildup of a lot of tracks where you hear the melody slowly coming in or a variation coming but if you're working on other tracks other than big room drops and climatic drops but you're going more for progress over time you can also use filtering to essentially move from sections of your song to other sections and to create again variation for instance we can hear your art melody slowly filtering in and eventually once it's fully open then you release the real melody or we finally get to hear the real sound filtering is awesome and it needs to be used a lot more in my opinion all right guys so for this example of filtering i wanted to use an old track i had here you can still see my old reference tracks which i don't have and i do have a lot of stuff missing but i managed to get an older uh part of the project file which still sounds kind of good the vocals were the placeholders though um but this is how it's going to sound like now in big room electro house you're really going to see a lot of people do this technique especially a lot of the pros when they're approaching the build up and they have the drum build going and they got uh, the melody coming in they're filtering it in this allows let's say you have a vocal to still maintain in the front of the mix before you get rid of it and then you have the maximum uh, drop but at the same time you're allowing people to listen to a little bit of a snippet of the drop uh, but you're not giving the sound all away. Essentially, you're giving them a sound that has been filtered and it's more pushed to the back because as you, many of you guys know, in order to create depth, you remove a lot of highs on a sound. Uh, so the idea is always, as you guys can see this. Okay, uh, so essentially the flute melody, as you can see, is just getting filtered in as the vocal sings. Now, the cool thing about filtering, too, is that you can essentially tease part of the melody in the introduction of the song as long as you're not giving it again all away. Right there, all that's happening is, again, we're hearing a filtered version of the melody without the full flute out in full force, but we're not hearing the second part, the part that essentially makes the full melody make sense and sound really good, which is the... Okay, uh, so again, filter, and you can utilize this in longer tracks as well. The thing is, is obviously in longer tracks, uh, you can have the song filtered for a couple of minutes before you release it. Uh, but the idea is, again, utilize filtering. You can also remove uh, part of the low end of the kick. Uh, you can filter drums down in the breaks. You can do a lot of cool stuff like that. It's all about creativity at some point. But these are just, again, uh, techniques, theories that you can utilize uh, whenever you need them in order to help um, add more variation without actually adding any new sounds or, or any new elements to a song that doesn't need it anymore. Melodic variation. There are two ways to add variation to a melody, guys, and that is through rhythm and obviously note selection or aka symmetry where you're going up, down, or you're doing up, down, up, down, up, down, and what. But, however, even though it sounds simple, it can be a little bit hard for us, and that's the funny thing. I used to think that a lot of big room drops, like from Kashmir, that the melody was the same in the first part of the drop to the second because I wouldn't listen to it, again, from an analytical point of view. 
But when I finally did, I started realizing that Cashmere utilizes a lot of rhythmic variations. So in the first part of the song, he might go like Second part around, he'll go So that's just rhythmic variation. You can double time on certain parts. Uh, you could change one note instead of going somewhere. Again, uh, use it to your advantage. But again, every genre is going to be a little bit different on how we do this. And if you're making like Injuna Deep stuff the, and you have an art melody that just keeps repeating constantly, you can always have your climax melody, which is the all out melody. And the first parts of the song, you're just hearing maybe the first three notes, maybe the no, um, the full melody without all the notes added, etc. Melodic variation is pretty simple in theory, but it can get a little hard and I'm there with you guys on that. All right, guys, so we're back to the first track I showed you guys. And I just want to talk a little bit about the idea and the melody on how to create variation. Now, the original, original idea Usually the way I work on these kind of tracks that progress over a long period of time, maybe for trance and Juno Deep stuff, um, melodic techno and techno, is I work on an 8-bar loop. And then from there, I know that that is the climax for my song. And then I have to work my way to there. Now, using melodic variation is a big key and keep it an interesting as we develop the 8-bar loop that we have. Because without variation, it's just a fucking loop. Okay, so this is the main idea. Okay, so as we progress in the song, obviously, we don't want to give it away. So in this section of the break here, our first little break, we just have the first part of that melody playing. And of course, filtering in. Okay, and then we have the first variation where it's just exactly the same. But again, little things like this just capture the the listener. Uh, they, it gets the attention uh, the attention of the listener because they they've been they're caught in this kind of state of trance, uh, and hence the name Arvin Van Buren. What's up? Don't copyright me, but uh, you get the idea there. But little changes like that break the trance for a split second. Okay, so we got doo doo, and then we here we just do an inversion of that. So I just duplicate. Uh, sorry, uh, reverse it. So that way when we hear it, and then again, and then every eight bars something has to happen. So in this scenario, I, like, I add one more note to this art melody. So that speeds it up a bit more. And it also makes the track feel like it's going somewhere rather than if I just kept this do 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 do. It would feel like the track's just stagnant and not going anywhere. And then here a new sound comes in on the bass. So that's also another way to add variation, not in this video, but you can always bring a sound and just emphasize layer a new sound with the element you already have. Uh, uh, the vocal here as well starts doing something else, melodic variation. And then we get that. I might have to get rid of this guy here because it sounds a little cluttered. Finally, guys, the last tip I have for you guys has to deal with chords. Now, when it comes to chords, it's very easy for us to just go like, okay, I'm just going to have this four bar chord progression. Dun, 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 dun. And it just keeps repeating constantly. There's an easy way to add variation, guys, and that is going to be through inversions. Essentially, an inversion is, let's say you have the C minor chord, the triad, which is the C, the E flat, and the G. All you can do is get the C, 
put it up an octave or you can bring the, the two notes on top like the E flat or the G and bring that down an octave. There's a lot of ways to do those inversions. At the end of the day, it's the same chord. And when you use it, you might notice that the listener might not notice or realize it. But it, again, it, those little things go a long way in creating variation. Even though they might not hear the chord change, you know, subconsciously, they're feeling it and they're going to just feel like, well, okay, this, this feels kind of new. Uh, but it's very easy to implement. Check it out. So here we have just a very simple chord progression in the uh, E flat minor. And then over here we have the inversion of it. Now what you're going to notice is that it sounds a little different to the ear, but again, at the end of the day, it's the same exact chord. Uh, it's just again has an inversion and I'm just bringing the bottom note here up. There's various different uh, amounts of inversions that you can do. I'm not going to lie. I'm not that great when it comes to music theory. I've read hook theory and I know my stuff to an exact part. But at the end of the day, just these little things make a huge difference. And again, that's a great book if you want to learn a little bit about chords, how they use, how to do proper inversions, when to do the inversions, etc. Uh, great book, not sponsored by them, but I always like recommending it to people as a read if you ever want to just, you know, um, in, improve without having to watch YouTube videos or, or read something in your spare time when you're in the toilet or something. But I'm going to let this play out so you can see how it changes and how it fits. Okay, and then once you have, let's say, the inversions, then you can do what selected guys do all the time and just grab that middle note and open voices up all the way. So that way we get something fresh. Now, the cool way about thing about using inversions, guys, is that you can also do this on the drop of a song. Let's say you're not using a piano. The bass can change constantly throughout the song. And all you have to do is instead of hitting D sharp, you would go to the F sharp, as you can see. Uh, you would just do those changes. The only thing is I would probably be careful with the diminish, which is usually the second note in a minor scale. And I believe the note before your first, uh, or that would be the seven, I think. Yeah, uh, in a major scale. Alright guys, so those are going to be my five tips for adding variation to your music. If you guys have any more, you can leave them down in the comments below. I'll appreciate a like on the video if you found it useful, if you made it this far, and subscribe if you haven't guys. But as always, if you want to support my channel guys, the best way to do it is at evilsounds.com. I am a sound designer and that's what I do for a living and the support on those sound banks helps me keep making videos for you guys at a, in a full-time manner and I try my best with them guys, I really do. I might have writer's block here and there uh, when it comes to making videos but again I'll, I'll always strive to bring at least one video to you guys every week but if i can and i'm motivated i'll make three four or five but anyways you guys take care stay safe with everything happening and i'll catch you guys next time peace out and happy producing